see what the car gives us back with its own mind. Regenerative braking is a system in electric cars which enables them to recoup energy that would otherwise be lost as heat through the brake pads and discs and put it back in the battery as extra range for you. But I'm not sure quite how effective the regenerative braking in my car is and because I'm a bit of a nerd, I want to find out exactly what it gives me back. So we're going to do a little test. I'm going to drive this car three times around the exact same 10 mile loop lots of ups, downs, stopping and starting in there and see what I get back with three different settings of regen braking. First one, we're going to completely turn it off, nothing back, so we should lose 10 miles of range. Second one, we're going to manually do regenerative braking with the flappy paddles here, which should, you would think, give us the most back because we can really apply it uh, to its most extreme. In the third, I'm going to let the car decide by putting it in auto, we do this, and I reckon that will be pretty effective, but I'm backing myself to beat it. So let's do the test and find out how much range we get back. So I switched off regen braking entirely, and this route is uh, gonna be a little bit twisting turning. It's got some country roads, I've got some chicanes on here, um, it's a residential street. It felt a bit weird actually having turned off the regen braking there because I forgot that I actually needed to brake, which kind of might tell you um, how accustomed you become to it pretty quickly when driving an EV. It becomes very natural very soon. So when you turn it off, it's a bit like, oh crap, I need to actually remember to put my foot on the brake pedal when I'm coming up to something. These are some pretty tight and twisty country lanes with some fairly dodgy road markings. So I'm doing quite a lot of braking, but now, I'm basically on the downhill. So I'm not accelerating really at the minute, I'm just coasting. Um, let's see, I've got to accelerate a little bit here. Oh, there's quite a lot of brake in there. No returned energy. Big downhill bit here, and it's going to go into an uphill. I know it's coming up, so I would be super coasting here anyway lots of downhill now and I am having to brake coming into these corners a little bit so I'd have expected to be getting something back from the car there but not in this one ah uh, lots of speed bumps down this road speed bumps cyclists pedestrians so I think I would be getting a fair amount of energy back here Another one, and another one. Some may argue they're a bit close together, but who am I? Uh, I'm not a town planner or a road builder. Right, so that is trip number one done. It's 114 miles now on the range. So from starting at 124, that's 10 miles driven and 10 miles of range lost. Surprisingly accurate. I've got full on regen braking now. Part of the challenge when doing it manually is that you have to be, you have to get quite used to the timing of things and working out whether it's better to coast or whether it's better with a regen on. Pick it up a bit. Do I need to slow down this corner? So get it all through the paddles pretty much, yeah. Have to touch the brake there like this where having the regen braking in manual comes into its own because you can dial it off and let gravity do the work and then when you come to a corner you can just flick it back on a little bit to gain some energy. Oh we've gone back up to 109. Oh uh, no we're back to 108. God it's tense times. Round about here Pretty much as good as you're gonna get. We'll just run across the road in front of you like that. Thanks very much. Okay, we're still on 107 miles here. Oh, hello. Oh, damn you. Can we put my foot on the brake pedal? Find a parking space more to the point. Yeah, 
Yes. Yes, I can. That is very interesting indeed because we are on 106 miles. Rough figures, that's 20% more efficient from me doing as aggressive uh, paddle flipping as I could. So do it in auto next, which is when you just set the car um, to do it, which on the Kia is when you, you basically pull and hold the two paddles and it goes into auto. So we'll see what happens there. 106, so we should be, well, based on the first one, based on this, there's only eight, so we should be back on 98 if it's as good in auto, uh, we'll see. Uh, auto would seem the most sensible because obviously it means you as the driver don't have to do as much work. Um, having said that though, with regenerative braking, regenerative braking, um, it's not always the most intuitive because you know you kind of need to adapt it to uh, the conditions of the road and what's in front of you and things like that, how fast and slow you want to slow down. So I'm interested to see whether the car can think better than I can. So I'm coming up to a sharp 90 degree bend here and it will just slow down gradually but it can't really know that I want to, you know, that there's another one coming up after it so I want to carry speed around or that, um, you know, there's a car ahead, it will just brake, you know, at a regular um, pace. Which then means you sometimes have to re-accelerate, accelerate again, um, to make up for the fact that it's not quite got it right because you you know it hasn't carried enough energy forward. So I'm interested to see what it does on the downhills as well because obviously with that on, I don't think it's going to adapt that well to just coasting and uh, freewheeling, which is where I think I've got most of the benefits from the other two, on the other two laps. So let's see what happens. God, it's like a hazard perception test down here. We've got horses who seemingly are bringing the dog along with them. It's interesting, off the leash. We've got cyclists. Uh, I've got a blind summit. So you see with the, as soon as you can start going downhill with the auto regen on, it just starts to, you know, grab the brakes, which is fine, but I'm just gonna have to Accelerate again anyway. Where we are now, for instance, uh, the previous lap, I was, there's a sharp left coming up here. I coasted into it and then used the paddles to put the brakes on and uh, I got around it. But now I'm just, if I lift off the accelerator, I'm just slowing down, which just means I've got my foot back on the accelerator. Kind of annoying with the auto on the cars. I could just be coasting. But now I'm just going to slow down, I'm getting loads of energy back, but I'm basically going to grind to a halt. So I'm coming up to this roundabout in a second, which last time I pretty much managed to nail with the manual regen. Flicking so the paddles, perfect kind of balance between slowing down, generating energy, and uh, maintaining the right speed for the circumstances. Let's see if I can do it with auto. Uh, Work. I've left it off too soon. I'm gonna have to accelerate. I'm gonna have to. Okay, some dudes just stopped on the wrong side of the road, which is interesting. Interesting approach to driving. Yes, just about. So I'm on 98 miles now. So basically, <laughs> between, I reckon I'm probably another two and a half, three miles away. So I basically, sh on the previous run where I was doing it myself, I would. That's how much energy I would have used. So unless I'm going to regenerate three miles between now and there. Three miles in, three miles, seems unlikely. Mm. Ooh, a Tesla. I'm still on 98 here, so there's some funkiness going on, but, uh, see what happens, this guy's not indicating, so I'll just break. So, songs with speed bumps. Bumps and the bum. Mm -hmm. No. 
saying 98, we are closing in on our destination. Maybe the car knows that I'm trying to test it. Uh, I reckon you're going to drop again, mate. You haven't got it in you, you bloody auto regen. Oh, last speed bump. 97. So, does that put us somewhere in the middle of the three, which is basically what we were expecting. So what have we learned from me driving around in the same 10 mile loop three times? I think it's pretty clear that the more effort you put into regen braking, the more energy you're going to get back. And it's definitely more effective doing it yourself than letting the car do it. Now, look, I know it's a 10 mile loop and it's on one day. So there are a lot of other variables that long term are going to affect how much you get back. But if we just take that simple baseline and say it's roughly 20% range back into the car by doing it yourself versus 10% letting the car do it, I think that's a pretty good baseline. So what I'm going to do over the next coming months is really test it over a longer range of distance and driving styles and see if that pattern plays out. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel to see where we get to. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. We'll catch you next time.